Tale as Old as Time, Chapter 1 It was just another ordinary day in France. The flowers were in bloom, the sun was high in the sky, and the town was just waking up and going about their daily lives. As Beau left his house to go into town, he could already tell that this day was like the thousands of others before it. It's not that he wasn't unhappy with his life, it's just that he wanted more than to live every day the exact same way. He was tired of the monotony. Beau was no stranger to the little village. Everyone knew exactly who he was, and it wasn't because, true to his name, he was rather handsome. He had long brown hair that he tied back with a blue ribbon. He wore a white undershirt with a sleeveless blue vest over top of it and light blue slacks on. He was well built and had a handsome face and an overall kind demeanor about him. But his looks were not why he was well known. Because he longed for a life outside the village, he was usually regarded as odd by the townsfolk. He wasn't into the usual activities like hunting, looking for a wife, or showing off his talents. He could usually be found reading all sorts of different books in all sorts of different places. Bo loved to read more than anything in the world. He dreamed of visiting places like the ones he read in his storybooks and falling in love with a woman who loved him for who he was. In fact, he spent so much time daydreaming, he was rarely aware of the looks everyone in town gave him. Bo left his quaint little home and headed to the bookshop in order to return his most recent book, Romeo and Juliet. What a tragic tale it was. Ah, uh, hello, Bo. The kind old bookkeeper greeted him. Lovely to see you again. Hello, miss, Bo said. I've come to return the book I've borrowed. You finished it already? I couldn't put it down. What a sad story of two lovers. It is that. I'm afraid we haven't gotten anything new since you were here yesterday. The woman laughed. Bo laughed with her. That's okay. I guess I'll just borrow this one. Bo took a book off one of the shelves and gave it to her to check out for him. This one? Again? Why, this is the third time you wanted to borrow it. I just love it so much. It's filled with romance, adventure, and magic. Bo, why don't you just take it home with you and keep it? Oh, no, I couldn't. No, no, I insist. It's the least I can do for you. Oh, thank you so much. Bo immediately began reading the book once again as he started his return home. He was so enveloped in the beautiful story that he didn't notice all the stares he was getting. He sat at the edge of the fountain and sighed. My favorite part. The guy meets the girl and he has no idea he's going to fall in love with her. Bo continued reading and was close to home when he passed the person he did not want to see. Hello, Bo. Bonjour, Gabriella. He answered as he tried to walk past her, but she coyly took his book from him. Gabriella, may I have my book back? Ugh, how can you read this? Where are the pictures? Some people use their imagination. Gabriella continued looking at his book, flipping through the pages. A trait you sorely lack, he added under his breath. Gabriella was determined to marry him. She had very long black hair that was usually pinned up in a half-up, half-down hairstyle. She was always wearing a red dress that made her stand out in any and every crowd. That's how she was, always looking for attention. She was the daughter of a rich merchant and was used to getting exactly what she wanted. And at that moment in time, she wanted Beau as her husband. He knew she only liked him for his looks, and that their marriage would advance her social status. Bo wanted to marry for love, like the couples in his stories. He was a sucker for a good romance story. Gabriella giggled. Oh, Bo, you should get your head out of the clouds and focus on what's really important. She smiled and took his arm as she rested her head on his shoulder. Me? Bo uncomfortably slid out of her grasp, unwilling to have her touch him. She pouted. Everyone's saying how you should find a woman soon, or you'll never make a decent living. It's not good for you to read all the time. You should be hunting with the others. Gabriella, I don't want to hunt. I love reading. Perhaps it's time for a change. Why don't we go down, back to my house, and I can show you all of my dresses. 
I need to know which ones will make me stand out the most in the event I have a formal dinner to go to. Bo grimaced. That sounded awful. Maybe some other time. Oh, why not? She pouted. He hated it when she did that. She just assumed that if she gave a little sad face, people would just do her bidding. The sad part was that it usually worked. I can't. I have to get home and help my mother. Gabriella's little sidekick laughed, and Beau finally noticed her presence. She was really short, only coming up to the middle of his chest. Unlike Gabriella, she was clumsy and basically followed her around like a little pet. <laughs> that fool Marguerite, she needs all the help she can get. <laughs> Don't talk about my mother that way. Yeah, Leah. Gabriella scolded, slapping her on the arm. Don't talk about his mother that way. My mother's not crazy. She's as smart as they come. No sooner had the words left his lips when an explosion came from his house. It wasn't an unusual sight, but nevertheless, Bo ran up to his home to make sure she was all right. Gabriella started after him. What Gabriella wanted, Gabriella got. Mother! <coughs> Bo called, coughing from all the smoke. <coughs> Mother! Are you all right? The smell of burning food filled the entire house. That's it! I'm giving up! The woman yelled, throwing her kitchen utensils on the counter. I am done trying to do this. Bo smiled. You always say that. No, I mean it this time. I have tried a million times and I just cannot get this recipe right. I'll just never get it right. Yes, you will. And you'll win first prize in the baking contest tomorrow at the fair. His mother smiled at him. You really believe so? Of course I do. I always have. Well, I guess one more try won't hurt. Bo helped her clean the stove and then proceeded to hand her the ingredients she requested. Once she put it in the stove, all they could do was wait and hope it didn't explode like the many times before it. Mother? Bo said as they waited for it to cook. Do you think I'm odd? Of course not. Why would you think that? Well, I just don't feel like I fit in here. There's no one really who shares any of my interests, and people talk about me. Just because I spend my time reading instead of hunting. Well, what about Gabriella? She's a pretty little thing. Oh, she's pretty. And stuck up. Rude. Conceited. She's definitely not my type. Don't worry, son. I'm sure that there's someone out there for you. Maybe you just haven't found her yet. All you need is a little time. Bo smiled. His mother always knew exactly what to say. After a good time, the room filled with a wonderful smell. You smell that, mother? It's a good sign! When it was time to take the dish out, Bo grabbed her cooking gloves and carefully took it out of the stove. After it cooled, Marguerite handed Bo a spoon. Go ahead and taste it, and be honest. Bo took a little of the dish and brought the spoon to his lips. His taste buds danced for joy as soon as it came in contact with his tongue. Mother, this is the best thing I have ever tasted in my entire life. Really? She grabbed the spoon of her own and tasted her concoction. Oh, you're right. Mother, you did it. You really did it. He hugged his mother in happiness. I knew you could! Hitch up, Phoenix, sweetheart. I'm going to the fair. Bo helped her make the dish again, then wrapped it up nicely for safe travels. Marguerite got their horse, Phoenix, hitched up to the cart, and filled the cart with her dish and necessary supplies she would need for her travels. Goodbye, mother! Bo called as she departed. Be careful! Goodbye, Bo. Wish me luck! Bo watched his mother leave and returned back inside to finish his book. He had to admit that he was worried about her being out there alone, but she was tough and could handle almost everything that was thrown her way. The next day, Bo was happily sitting in his cottage, hoping everything was okay with Marguerite. He was totally engrossed in the story and almost didn't hear the knock on the door. He put down his book and went to the door. He looked through the peephole and to his dismay, found that Gabriella was there. Bo groaned, not willing to have to put up with her, but opened the door, afraid to face the consequences of doing the opposite. 
Hello, Gabriella, he said as he put a completely fake face for her. Hello, Bo. There was something off. She wasn't wearing her usual red dress, but a long white one. Gabriella never wore white dresses, so this probably wasn't a good sign. Today is a very special day for the both of us. Oh, really? What's today? Gabriella giggled. There are so many boys out there who would love to be in your shoes right now. This is the day. Gabriella paused in front of the mirror and fixed her hair for a second. When she was satisfied with her appearance, though Bo was pretty sure she looked the exact same, she resumed. This is the day all our dreams come true. I don't think you know anything about my dreams, Gabriella. Bo was starting to piece together why she was wearing a white dress, and he wasn't going to be too happy if he was right. No, I do. Picture this, why don't you? I'm sitting in front of a fire. My husband is massaging my feet. We have children on the floor playing in front of us with the puppies. We'll have maybe six or seven. Puppies? Bo asked. Was he really having this conversation? No, of course not. Little boys and girls, just like you and me. Bo picked up his book off the table and placed it on the shelf. He suddenly had lost his interest in reading the story now. And do you know who that lovely husband will be? Uh, uh I don't know. She laughed in a way she thought was cute. <laughs> you, Bo. He was right. This was her idea of a proposal. And she was wearing a wedding dress. She expected him to marry her right this minute. Why couldn't she realize that he didn't want to marry her? Um, wow. I'm flattered, Gabriella. I don't know what to say. Easy. Just say yes. Bo backed up against the door, and Gabriella came up to him, pinning him against it. Please? She said with those eyes that turned everyone else into a puddle. We can be together forever! You know, I... I really just don't deserve someone as beautiful as you. Bo opened the door behind him, and Gabriella went tumbling out into a huge mud puddle. Her dress ruined, Gabriella let out an absolute fit. You will marry me, Bo. I will have you as my husband. Uh, how'd it go? Gabriella shoved her onto the ground and stormed off, a trail of icky mud following behind her. Touchy. Chapter 2 After the chaos outside had cleared, Bo peeked his head out. Is she gone? Not a speck of the disaster remained. Oh, thank goodness. What a witch. How can she just barge in here demanding me to marry her? Why on earth would I want to marry someone with absolutely no brain inside that pretty little head? Bo ran to the field behind his house and took in the gorgeous scenery. The whole thing with Gabriella was the icing on the cake. He just wanted to be free from the everyday life he had here and from the customs everyone had. He felt like his whole life had been laid out before him by people he didn't even know. Bo's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a horse galloping up to him. Phoenix? Hey, hey, calm down, girl. He slowly helped Phoenix calm down and stroked her head. It's okay. Where's mother, Phoenix? The panic inside Bo began to rise with each passing second. Has something happened to her? We have to find her. Can you take me to her? Phoenix seemed very uneasy, but he could tell that she knew where his mother was. Good girl. Bo unhitched the empty cart from her and brought the horse back up to the cottage. He grabbed a cloak since he had a feeling he would be out after dark, and it would get very cold very fast. Then he mounted onto Phoenix, and they took off in search of his mother. As he predicted, he rode well into the night, and it took quite a long time before Phoenix approached an iron gate that protected a huge castle. What is this place? Had he not been so worried about his mother, he may have taken the time to appreciate how majestic the castle was. He dismounted off Phoenix, who then prodded him, insisting they turn back. Whoa, steady, girl. It's all right. Everything's going to be okay. I'm going to find mother. We'll both be back very soon, okay? Bo went inside the gates and saw something on the ground. 
he quickly ran over to it and recognized it as his mother's necklace, given to her by his father a few months before his death. Mother. The panic inside him had reached its peak. He just hoped that she had made it to the castle safely, and whoever resided there provided good hospitality. He slowly approached the huge door and, with all his might, pushed it open. He thought he heard voices, but they stopped as soon as he was inside. Hello? Is anyone here? Mother? Are you in here? Bo went up the stairs, but he was losing hope. This place was gigantic and filled with many rooms. His mother could be anywhere. If she was even here. Mother? Are you here? Suddenly, there was the sound of a door creaking. Bo whipped around to find a door open that he was certain had not been opened before. Slowly, he went through it and came across many steps that evidently led to some kind of tower. Hello? Is someone there? He thought he heard footsteps, but when he followed them, he found no one. Bo? A weak voice called back. Bo looked for the source of the voice and was horrified to find his mother in some kind of... cell. Mother! He picked up a torch and ran over to her and clutched her hands tightly. Are you all right? Bo, you need to leave now. Your hands are like ice. I've got to get you out of here. Listen to me, Bo. There's something inside this castle. You need to get out before it gets you too. What are you talking about? There's no time. You must get out while you can. No, I'm not going to leave you. Suddenly, Bo felt a huge hand whip him around so hard, stars appeared in his eyes. The torch got knocked out of his grasp, enveloping them all in a pitch-black room. Please get out, Bo. Now! Who's there? Bo called out to the darkness. His only response was an unearthly growl. What have you done to my mother? What she deserved! A voice growled back. He noted that while it was full of anger and not human, it sounded rather feminine. What do you mean? She was trespassing! You have to let her out. She's old and ill. She could die in here. The punishment brought on to her by her own doing. I will do anything for you. Please, let her out now. Bo was growing more desperate. His mother was very pale and coughing violently. If she didn't get proper care soon, it wasn't going to be good. There's nothing you can do. Get out of my castle! My mother needs help. You have to let her go. I don't have to do anything. Get out now, before you join her. That gave Bo an idea. A terrible one, really, but he had no choice. What if I stayed instead of her? There was silence. You mean you would take her place in here? If it means she goes free, yes. Bo, please don't. If I set her free... You must promise to stay here. Forever. Bo realized that he was negotiating with the shadow. Let me see you. This was met by another growl, and then a figure slowly came into the single shaft of light in the room. Bo's eyes widened as he realized what exactly was living in this place. It was, a, uh, well, a beast. It was obvious to him that it was female because of the voice and the way its eyes and mouth were set. It, she, wore brown pants and a white shirt with a blue cape. Anger was etched onto her face and almost looked permanent. Bo, listen to me. I can't let you do this. You'll wreck your entire future. I can't let you die. He stood up and went over to the creature, who towered over him by a few feet. I will stay. Have it your way. She stomped over to the cell and opened the door. Marguerite ran to her son, and they embraced tightly. I'm so sorry, son. Please forgive me. I love you, mother. The beast dragged Marguerite away as they both protested. Bo was left alone in the little shaft of light. His mother was gone. She was safe, but he had to ask himself, what was going to happen now? Bo didn't cry. He trained himself not to. Since he already got a lot of weird looks from everyone he passed, he didn't need to add the fact that he was weak to the mix, so he forced himself to be strong. But right now, who was there to hide from? The Beast? 
For the first time in years, Bo allowed himself to cry. He was alone, locked in a tower for the rest of his life, never to see his mother or anyone ever again. He watched from a sole window in the room as his mother was taken back to town by some weird moving caravan-like thing. I'm sorry, mother. This hadn't been what he wanted. Of course, he wanted his mother safe, but he didn't want them to be separated in order for that to happen. He wanted both of them back at the cottage safe and sound. Now she had lost her son, and he had lost his mother. It was like their family, as small as it was, had been ripped right apart. Bo heard footsteps and quickly wiped his eyes. Beast or not, he did not want anyone to see him so vulnerable. When he saw the beast standing in the doorway, unimaginable anger flooded through him. I promised to stay here, and you didn't even let me say goodbye, he said with a controlled voice. He had to keep it calm. There was no doubt in his mind that this thing could rip him to shreds in seconds. Best not to provoke it. Her. I never get to see my own mother again, and I didn't even get the chance to give her a proper goodbye. He cast his eyes out to the window and leaned his head on it. Uh, let me show you to your room. Bo's head whipped around. What do you mean? I thought I was to stay up here. Well, do you want to stay up here in this little tower? She growled, obviously already losing patience. Well, no. Then come with me. Bo quickly got up and obliged the beast's order. He followed her throughout many different halls and passages. The creepy statues cast eerie shadows on the floor and walls, making Bo uneasy, but he was determined not to show it. He was not going to appear weak in front of this thing. Um, I hope you like it here. Bo looked at the beast. That was the nicest thing she'd said so far, and in definitely the nicest voice. This place is your home now, so you're free to go anywhere you wish. Just not the West Wing. Why? What's in the West- It's forbidden! The beast snarled as she rounded on him, causing Bo to jump. He immediately silenced, not wishing to incur any more of her anger. They walked further until they came to a huge set of double doors, painted a nice blue color. She opened the door for him, and he slowly walked in. These were much better arrangements than the prison above. That didn't mean he felt any better about this whole situation. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. My servants can do anything you wish for. And, uh, I'm sorry about your mother. Bo didn't turn to look at her, but he was surprised. Did she just apologize to him? And we will have dinner together tonight. My servants will escort you down when the time is right. I don't have much of an appetite. The beast grabbed his shoulder and whipped him around to face him. You will join me for dinner! I'm not asking, I'm telling you! I'm the head of this castle, and I expect you to follow my orders. Is that clear? She left the room and slammed the door behind her. Bo stood there, in shock for a minute, trying to slow his racing heart from her outburst. Even away from the village, he was being told how to live his life by someone he didn't know. And now, he had lost his mother and everything dear to him. After holding his emotions in for far too long, he collapsed on the floor as his body shook with sobs. He was a prisoner, a captive, held against his will. It was the end of life as he knew it. Chapter 3 Gabriella sat in the tavern, stewing. She was furious at how Bo had completely rejected her and humiliated her in front of everyone. She had never been rejected before. She always got what she wanted. Her father always warned her about going to the tavern. He said it wasn't a place for a girl like her. Actually, it was. Being here helped her feel special and needed since every man in here was fawning over her. Her hair was pulled back into a tight ponytail, still damp from cleaning the mud off of her. Uh, you want me to get you something? Yeah, get me Bo as my husband. Yeah, uh, uh sorry about that. <laughs> This is infuriating. Look, Gabriella, you've got to pull yourself together. Anyone would be lucky to have you as a wife. Bo doesn't know what he's missing. There's not a girl like you anywhere. You're better than all of them. Gabriella rested her head on her hand, ignoring her friend's attempts to cheer her up. Look at all the guys here. 
Every one of them wants to be your husband. You know why? Because you're flawless. Gabriella's head turned. All the guys were staring at her, wishing she could be his. She could easily have a husband within the next few minutes if she chose. But she wanted Bo, not any of these suckers. But Leia was right. Every girl in the village wanted to be her, and every guy wanted to marry her. She could at least have a little fun while she was here, and boost her self-esteem in her efforts to think of how to win over Bo. She bounced from table to table, her red dress swishing as she danced along. She played with the boys' hair and caressed their faces. She even gave a lucky two a small kiss on the cheek, which resulted in a fight between them about who she liked more. After taking her ponytail out and letting her long wavy locks fall to her back, which resulted in the crowd going wild, she flipped her hair over her shoulder and her three loyal followers almost melted. She smiled at them. They could always be found wherever she was. She had heard them threatening to beat up Bo once because he had stolen her affections, but she quickly put a stop to that. They always wore the same colors. Lawrence wore green, Paul wore orange, and Claude, her most faithful follower, wore red to match her dress. One of the men in the tavern helped her onto a table, and she began to do a sultry dance on it to win over her crowd of admirers. Then she fell back and one lucky man got to catch her. She was put on two men's shoulders and lifted high above the crowd. They all began chanting her name, and she felt much better. Everyone started cheering for her as they set her back down next to Leah. Suddenly, Marguerite burst through the door and ran into the tavern. Someone! Anyone! You have to help me! It's got him! Marguerite? The bartender cried. No one really knew her very well. They had all heard of her and her cooking, but no one really knew her. After all, what was a woman like her going to do in a bar? Please, it's got him locked in a dungeon. What got who? Someone asked. My son, Bo. Gabriella's head whipped around at the sound of her beloved's name. Now this woman had caught her interest. Someone has to go get him. Hey, hold on, lady. Now tell me, what's got Bo locked up? A beast. A horrible, awful, ugly beast. Everyone started laughing, obviously not believing her, and Gabriella joined in. I'm not lying. I was in the woods, and I went to the castle for shelter. I was taken in by a talking teapot, clock, and candlestick. But there was something else there. And now it's holding Bo captive. Oh, really? Was it really ugly? Oh, yes. Was it big? Bigger than anything I've ever seen. She looked around. Will you please help me get my son back? Hey, lady. We'll help you. She motioned for the men to take her away. Wait, what are you doing? The men threw her out onto the street into the cold winter weather where the snow was falling. Gabriella looked after the woman. True, she should have been nicer to her future mother-in-law, but right now, she was trying to forget about (laughs) Beau. Crazy, Marguerite. She's out of her mind. That gave Gabriella an idea. Hey, Leah. I think I've got an idea about how to get Bo as my husband. Bo had long finished his cry fest. He forced himself to pull it together and act like the tough guy he was supposed to be. In reality, he just wanted to crawl into a hole and never come out. At the rate he was going, that's pretty much what happened. At that moment, he was lying on the bed, reflecting about what had gone terribly wrong in the past 24 hours. There was a soft knock at the door. He knew a knock like that wouldn't be from the beast, so he slowly went over to the door. Who is it? Mr. Potts, my boy. A voice on the other end said. Bo took a deep breath and hoped he didn't look like he had just jumped off a cliff. I thought you might like a bit of tea. Bo's mouth dropped open. Mr. Potts was an actual teapot. A walking, talking teapot. You're a... You're a... A... Bo backed up in shock at the moving objects. He ended up bumping into a huge wardrobe he didn't realize was behind him. Whoa there! Careful, son! This is impossible! You're not supposed to move or talk or anything! And yet here we are. This isn't happening. I'm afraid it is. Before you think you're going crazy... Let me tell you 
that you're not the only one who's talked to us. Your mother conversed with us, too, when she was here. You talked to my mother? Yes, son, we did. She was very kind to us. Our apologies about how she ended up being treated. No, no, it, it wasn't your fault. I told you he was handsome, didn't I, Papa? A little girl's voice said. Bo noticed a little teacup next to the teapot. Bo had to smile. She seemed really cute. For a teacup, anyway. That's enough, China. Mr. Potts said as he leaned over and poured some tea into the cup. Now, go over to the nice young man. Careful. Don't spill anything. Thanks, Bo said quietly as he lifted up the little cup. Hey, want to see me do a trick? This was the strangest thing that had ever happened to him. He was talking to a teacup. He decided to humor himself and the little cup and nodded. She took a deep breath and puffed out, making bubbles appear into the tea that spilled over the side. China! Sorry, Papa. My boy, that was certainly a brave thing you did for your mother. We all think so. Maybe so, but now I've lost everything. My mother, all my hopes and wishes, my future. Son, I know things seem bad now, but everything will work out in the end if you let it. Well, I'd love to stay and chat more, but I've got to get dinner on the table for you and the mistress. I'll see you in a few minutes. The dishes clinked out the door, leaving Bo to wonder if that really just happened. This had been a really long day. Well, we should get you dressed up. You can't eat with the mistress wearing ordinary clothes. <laughs> Let's see what we got in here. The wardrobe's drawers opened up, revealing many different suits of all different colors. Hmm, what about this one? It seems like it would work all right. He used one of the doors as a hand and pulled out a really nice suit. Nicer than anything Bo had ever owned, anyway. Well, that's nice of you, but I don't think I'm going to dinner. Oh, no, you have to. The mistress has ordered it. They were interrupted by a small little clock running in and announcing that dinner was served, but Bo didn't move. The girl paced downstairs at a full table, waiting for that boy. Where is he? I told him to come down ages ago. Why isn't he here yet? My dear... Please try to understand his position. He's lost his mother and his freedom in a matter of minutes. It's a lot for him to take in. Madame, have you thought that maybe he'll break the spell? The candlestick, Chandel, asked her. Of course I have, I'm not stupid! Well then, perfect! You fall in love with him, and then he falls in love with you, and then the spell is broken and we'll be back to our own selves by midnight. I'm afraid it's not that simple, Shandell. These kinds of things take time. But the rose has already begun to wilt. We don't have time. Who am I fooling? He's unlike anyone I've ever seen. He's so handsome and I'm... I mean, look at me. I'm hideous. Sweetheart, you must help him see past what's on the outside. I don't think I can. Mr. Potts and Chandel hopped down from the mantel. Well, here's a start. Act more ladylike. First, straighten up. The girl did so. And when he comes in, give him a nice smile. Come on, mistress. Smile. The girl smiled, but it looked pretty scary. On second thoughts, don't smile. Don't scare him off. He's shaken up enough as it is. Impress him with your knowledge. Uh, please, be gentle. Present him with compliments. And be sincere when doing so. And, and you, you must, must control, control your, your temper. temper. The doorknob began to turn, and the girl straightened up and tried to look as ladylike as she could for being, a, uh, well... Here he comes. Remember, be kind. The little clock, Cora, entered instead. The girl groaned. Where's the boy? Cora started fidgeting. Um, well, he's just, um, he's actually doing, well, he refuses to come. Anger rose up inside her like it had never before. 
What? She ran up to the boy's room, not listening to what her friends were saying behind her. When she made it to his room, she banged on the door with all her might. I told you to come down to dinner with me. I'm not hungry. You come out here now before I... I... Do what? I'll break the door and force you to come down. Your Grace, uh, I don't believe that's the best way to earn his affections. <laughs> Please, just at least attempt to be ladylike. But he's driving me up the wall. Gently, gently. Now, ask the boy nicely. The girl took a deep breath and tried to push down the anger inside her. <sighs> Will you come to dinner with me? No! The girl pointed at the door angrily and looked ready about to kick it down. Madam, he's just angry at the whole situation. Please try to see things from his point of view. She took another deep breath and tried again. It would make me quite happy if you would join me for dinner tonight. When she saw the expectant look on her companion's faces, she added, Please. No! Ugh, you can't stay in that room forever! Yes, I can, and I will! Fine! Then do that for all I care! But you will not get anything to eat until you eat with me! Bo thought he heard the sound of soft sobbing on the other side of the door, but he wasn't exactly sure. Well, that didn't go the way it should've. The girl ran into the west wing as fast as she could. Tears soaked her fur, like the millions that had flowed down her cheeks before, especially after the transformation took place. I just can't do this anymore. I tried to be nice, and he rejects me. After I let him stay in the best room in the castle and not in a cell, what more does he want me to do? She picked up her mirror. Show me the boy! With a flash, the mirror revealed the boy sitting on the bed talking with the wardrobe in the room. The mistress really isn't as bad as you think she is, son. Why don't you at least give her a chance? Get to know her better. I don't want to get to know her. She's keeping me prisoner and took my mother away from me. I don't ever want to see her. She put down the mirror, having seen all she could take. Who am I kidding? He'll never see me as anything but the monster I am. It's hopeless for all of us. Chapter 4 Despite what Bo said, he knew the beast was right. He couldn't stay in the room forever. He'd starve to death. He waited until the wardrobe was silent and then peeked his head out of the room. There was no one in sight in the hallway, aside from a candlestick that looked like it was sleeping, so he carefully treaded through the passages in the castle as he looked for the kitchen, hoping he didn't come across the beast. He hadn't had anything to eat in hours and was quite famished. He finally found his way to the food, where he saw Mr. Potts talking with the clock. Ah, so nice to see that you've decided to leave the room, boy. My name is Cora, the official head of the household, appointed by the mistress herself. Delighted to meet you. She went to shake his hand when the sleeping candlestick jumped in front of her. And this is Chandel. Enchanté, monsieur. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. Well, I am pretty hungry. Ah, you hear that, everyone? The lad's hungry. Stoke up the fire and let's give him a meal. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Remember what the mistress said? Well, I'm certainly not going to let the poor boy go hungry. All right, fine. He can have a glass of water, a little bread, and then... Cora, you're much too harsh. This boy is not our prisoner here in the castle. He is our guest, and we are happy to serve. We must make him feel nice and welcome. Since what he got from the mistress was anything but... Chandel escorted Beau to a huge dinner table that stretched further than he ever imagined. Please keep quiet. If the mistress hears, she will throw a huge fit, and we'll all be right in the center. Please, what's dinner without some music? What? Not music? Cora tried to run after her, but was stopped by all the dishes. Beau took a seat at the table, and Chandel introduced the dishes to him along with all sorts of different foods he had never even thought of trying. His mother would have loved to see all this. 
The dishes put on an elaborate show for him, and he had to keep telling himself that this wasn't a dream, and inanimate objects were really doing all of this. By the end, he was not only full, but wide awake. Okay, well, that was fun. Now it's time for bed. I can sleep if I wanted to. I want to see everything this enchanted castle has to offer. <laughs> Who told you this castle was enchanted? She pointed an accusing finger at Chandel. It was you, wasn't it? Bo couldn't believe she was asking that. They had just put on a huge show with kitchen utensils. I want to see more of it. Um, do you want a tour? Uh, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. We can't have him looking in certain places like the you-know-where. Bo smiled cheekily. Giving his best smile that made Gabriella go nuts, he said to Cora, Well, why don't you take me around? I'm sure you know everything about this place since you're obviously very intelligent. Had Cora been in human form, she would have blushed. Oh, well, all right, a quick tour. Cora led them on, but Bo wasn't really listening. His curiosity was getting the better of him, and he wanted to know what was up with the West Wing. So he silently tiptoed away from them and headed to the stairs. Monsieur! Dang it. What's up there? Bo asked, trying to appear innocent. Nothing. Why, why, there's nothing in the West Wing at all. Oh, so that's the West Wing, he said as Cora confirmed what he already assumed. Nice one. What is she hiding up there away from me? Nothing! The mistress is hiding nothing, I promise! <laughs> Well, then, why is it forbidden? He asked as he stepped over them, but they blocked his path once more. Perhaps we could show you something else, like the tapestries or the paintings. Maybe later. What about the gardens outside, or, uh, the library? Bo spun around. There's a library in here? Chandel noticeably relaxed. Yes, a huge one, with every kind of book you can think of. Bo began to follow them, but he could see the library any time. This may be his only chance to really see what this girl was hiding from him. He slowly climbed the stairs and when he reached the end of the hall, he saw a mirror that had been smashed. Perhaps she hated her appearance? Who wouldn't? He opened the set of doors, heart rate increasing. He knew he wasn't supposed to be here, but he had to know what was such a big secret. The room was full of all kinds of junk and seriously needed a huge sweeping and a wipe down. He saw a picture that had been torn, obviously by claws, severing the face. He looked at it and started to lift up one of the fallen parts of the picture. It was a portrait, he knew that much, of a girl who was really pretty. Those eyes seemed to stare straight through him, even though they were not real. Before he could see the whole picture, he caught sight of something in his peripheral vision. There was a beautiful rose hidden under a glass case. It was glowing and sparkling in a way he had never seen before. He gently took the glass case off, determined to see the rose for all it's worth. He reached out to touch it, when a shadow overtook him and the glass case was snapped back over the top of the flower. Bo's stomach dropped to the floor. He had been caught. Why did he have to be so stupid? What do you think you are doing? She sounded angrier than he had ever heard. It's not what you think. Do you realize what might have happened had you touched this? I didn't mean to hurt anything. I told you this place was forbidden. I'm sorry. Get out. Just get out. She started throwing any object she could find, and Bo had to duck several times to avoid the raining furniture. He turned and ran before he got killed by either the falling objects or the beast herself. He grabbed his cloak and wrapped it around himself, preparing to face the snow. Wait, monsieur! Chandel cried as he ran down the steps. Please, don't leave! Promise or not, I'm not staying here. Bo was not one to break promises, but this was it. He was not going to live a life away from his home and family to be treated like an infectious disease and verbally abused by a creature. He just had to get out. He couldn't stay here any longer. He found Phoenix still obediently waiting for him and took off, leaving the castle as fast as he could, trying to get back to his mother. The girl's heart broke. This was all her fault. If she could just learn to control her temper, things would go a lot smoother. She picked up the mirror again and said, 
Show me the boy. She watched as he galloped through the storm. She noticed wolves start to approach him, but he didn't see them yet. Even if he was experienced in fighting, there was no way he was going to be able to stop them all. She ran out into the storm to go find him. Maybe this was the way she could make up for everything that had happened so far. Phoenix became restless in the storm and the unmarked path. She stopped, trying to figure out her surroundings when she heard growling. He saw to his horror that there were a pack of wolves looking at him hungrily. Come on, girl! Phoenix took off, and for all Bo knew, he could have been heading right back to the castle. But he kept going, his only thought being to get away from the wolves. They nipped at his heels, trying to throw him off his horse, but he held onto the reins tightly. Phoenix was going faster than she ever had before. They kept galloping through the forest when they were cornered by the wolves. Phoenix started bucking up and down in fright, which caused Bo to fall off the poor horse, making all of his hair fall out of the blue ribbon. Phoenix's reins got stuck fast on the tree, and she tried to fight off as many wolves as she could with her hooves. Bo grabbed a branch and went to his horse's aid. A wolf hopped on her back, but Bo smacked it off her. Are you okay, girl? He said to his horse as he tried to get the hair out of his eyes. The wolves, now bigger in number, advanced on him. He armed himself, but one of the wolves grabbed the stick, completely breaking it in two. Bo kicked one wolf with his heel, but that just made it even angrier. It leapt at him and latched onto his cloak. Another wolf prepared to jump on him while he couldn't get away, but Bo kicked it once more. The rest of the wolves advanced again, and seeing as he couldn't get his cloak loose from the wolf's hold, he just closed his eyes and waited to be mauled. But the mauling never came. He opened his eyes to find the beast picking up one of the wolves and roaring in its face in a terrifying manner. She threw the wolf away and stood next to Bo. He couldn't believe this was really happening. The beast, who seemed like she hated him, was saving him from these wolves? She had come after him? How did she even find him? The wolves all leapt onto the beast at once, and she tried her hardest to shake them off. He noticed her get covered in various scratches and bites, and was covered in blood. She managed to knock one wolf against the tree, killing it, and the others ran away frightened for their lives. The beast turned to Bo, red blood dripping from her wounds and tainting the white snow. Exhausted, she collapsed onto the ground. Bo turned to Phoenix and prepared to mount her, but he found that he couldn't. After all, she did just save his life, and she would die out here if he didn't get her taken care of. Making his decision, he had Phoenix take the girl back to the castle. He managed to get her out of consciousness long enough to crash down onto the huge chair in front of the fire. He and Mr. Potts prepared a bowl of hot water, and Bo dipped a rag into it. He looked up to find the beast licking her wounds. Don't do that. You'll only make it worse. Look, just hold still, please. He touched her wound with the rag, and she responded to the pain by growling loudly in his face. <laughs> Ugh, that hurts! Well, if you just hold still, maybe it wouldn't hurt as much. If you hadn't run away, none of us would be here, and I wouldn't be so cut up I look like I took a bath in broken glass. Well, if you hadn't yelled and screamed at me, maybe I wouldn't have run away. Oh, yeah? She paused for a second, thinking of a good retort. Well, you weren't supposed to be in the West Wing. Well, you should learn to control that horrid temper of yours. She sank back in the chair, unable to answer. Now, just hold still. I'm not going to lie, but this may hurt a little. He touched the rag to her scratches, and she winced in pain, but did not move. Look, I wanted to say, thank you for what you did back there, saving me and all. She looked back at him. Did he just thank her? No one ever thanked her. Not in years. She tried to remember her manners and answered, Um, you're welcome. Bo looked at her and could tell she was finally starting to bring down her walls. Chapter 5 Gabriella sat with Leia in the darkness of the tavern, the only light provided by a small lantern, as she met with an old family friend, Madame Ruse. She had been in business with her father for a while before she decided to start a new career, leader of the asylum. It was a job she certainly loved. She enjoyed watching the crazies writhe around as they went more and more insane with each passing day. I don't usually leave my asylum this late, madam, but I was told that this was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Madame Ruse was quite old, but that didn't mean she was unfit to watch over the crazies. 
She had a slight hunched back, and her skin was quite wrinkled with age. Her appearance was indeed frightening, especially to the crazies. You're right. She pulled out a huge sack of cash she had taken from her father. All she had to do was give him her little pity eyes and he handed her whatever she wanted. Getting the money was easier than most things she wanted. Madame Rue smiled. I'm listening. Gabriella smiled again, having gotten her full attention. All right. Here's what I have in mind. I want Bo as my husband, but he refuses. I don't know why. After all, I'm the girl everyone wants in this little village. So I need to... Lean him in my direction so he sees things my way. <laughs> he turned her down flat and threw her in the mud! Gabriella glared at her and flipped the cup she was drinking from up in her face. The drink went all over her dress. She turned back to Madame Ruse. Everyone believes his mother is out of her mind. She came in here tonight talking about a, a beast or something in some kind of castle. Not to mention a talking teapot. Madame, Marguerite is harmless. Maybe so, but the thing is, Bo would do anything to protect his little mother, especially from being locked away in an asylum. Yeah. <laughs> Even marry someone he hates. Gabriella glared at her again, and Leia spilled the drink on herself before Gabriella could do it. So, you want me to lock away little Miss Marguerite in my asylum unless Beau becomes your husband? Gabriella smiled and nodded. Darling, that's absolutely terrible and conniving. <laughs> of course I'll help you. Anything for my favorite girl. Gabriella smiled. Bo was as good as hers. Marguerite paced inside her house. She looked at the picture of Bo's father. Oh, darling. If only you were here. You'd help me get Bo back from that monster. She sighed and began packing a bag. I've got to try and get him out of there myself. This is all my fault anyway, and he doesn't deserve to be locked up for my problem. She was hesitant, going back up alone after what happened last time, but decided that Bo was more important than anything. She quickly left the house into the snow and began her trek back to the castle on foot. No sooner had she left when Gabriella arrived with Leia and Madame Ruse. Bo! Marguerite! She called out to an empty house. Hello? Oh well. Guess the whole plan isn't gonna work. Gabriella grabbed Leia by the arm. They can't stay away forever. When they come back, we'll be ready to put the plan in action. Still holding onto Leia's arm, Gabriella left the house and went down the stairs. She released her at the bottom and ordered, Stay here and inform me the second those two walk through that door. You mean out in the cold? You have a jacket on. Just stay here and keep a lookout for them. Leia groaned and leaned against the railing on the stairs. This was really starting to be a one-sided relationship. Bo became much more comfortable to walk throughout the castle and talk with the beast since their little adventure in the woods. You know, Bo said as he walked with the beast through the halls, I don't believe we ever properly introduced ourselves. I'm Bo. He held out his hand for her to shake. She looked at it like it was something from outer space. Chandel mimicked shaking hands with him, so that's what she did, her huge paw contrasting largely with his much smaller hand. Lovely to meet you. Do you have a name I can call you? It seems rather rude to keep referring to you as she, her, and beast. She stared at him for a second. Was this boy really asking for her name? She hadn't told her name to anyone in years. After all, all the servants addressed her as mistress, and no one else had come to the castle since the curse. Um... It's, uh... Adriana. That's a beautiful name. She might have blushed if her cheeks weren't covered in fur. Bo took Phoenix on a little trek around the castle grounds, since the poor horse hadn't been able to walk around in too long. 
the snow glistened on the ground in the beautiful pure white, making the environment look much less terrifying than it usually did. Adriana watched with Chandel and Cora on a balcony as both stroked the horse's head. I've never felt this way about anyone before. Even all those suitors who came to see me. Her parents had been determined to marry her off as soon as possible, and had all sorts of men come to the castle in an effort to win over her affections and become her husband. She had been attracted to some of them, but that was nothing compared to what she felt for Beau. I have to do something for him. Look at all he's done for me, and I've barely done anything for him. She looked at her companions. What should I do? Well, there's the usual things girls give to young men. Uh, guns for hunting, a new hunting vest, hunting tools. No, 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 no. Haven't you paid any attention at all? Bo is not a hunter. This needs to be something really, really special. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Chapter 6 Bo, I want to show you something. Adriana said in front of a set of closed double doors. But first, you have to close your eyes. When he gave her a suspicious look, she smiled widely and said, Please, it's a surprise. Don't you like surprises? Hmm. All right. He shut his eyes tightly. Okay. Now take my hand. Beau reached his arm out, and Adriana grasped it in her huge paw. She slowly led him into the middle of the room, then released his hand. Can I open them now? No, not yet. Just give me a second. She went over to all the curtains and opened them wide. Per her request, the servants had cleaned up the room and fixed it up to pristine condition. It looked better than it ever had before, and she hoped that Beau felt the same way. Bo could see light from his closed eyes. Can I open them now? Adriana took a look at the room. It looked perfect. Yes. Open them... now. Bo's eyes opened and he was surrounded by a room full of hundreds, maybe thousands of books. He gasped at the wonderful sight. He had never seen so many books in his entire life. The bookshop in his village was really small, and could only house so many, and he had read them all. He could spend an entire lifetime in here, and not even make a dent. This... this is incredible! You... you really like it? It's amazing! Then this whole room and everything in it belongs to you. It's a present. From me to you. You can't be serious! Of course I am. I was told you like reading, and I thought I'd make your stay here worth your while. Bo smiled at her. This is the best present anyone has ever given me. Thank you so much. Adriana smiled. They were headed in the right direction. Bo agreed to finally eat a meal with her, and they set out to have breakfast that morning. The servants presented them with their bowls, and Bo picked up his spoon and began to eat. He looked over at Adriana, who looked like she didn't know how to eat her food. The truth was, Adriana hadn't eaten in front of someone for the longest time, and was having trouble remembering what she was supposed to do. China nudged the spoon towards her with her little nose, and Adriana slowly picked it up. She attempted to eat, but the little spoon was much too small for her large paw. She fumbled around with it for a while, but was unsuccessful. She was incredibly embarrassed, and knew she looked stupid in front of Bo. Adriana... She looked up to find him smiling at her in a very sincere way. He put his spoon down and held up his bowl. Adriana smiled back at him, realizing what he was doing. She picked up her bowl, and the two of them toasted to each other and sipped straight from the bowl. Later, Bo took Adriana outside to the courtyard to get some fresh air. He took some bird seed and fed it to the little birds flying around outside. One landed on his finger, its small talons tickling his skin. Hey, little guy. The bird chirped in response, and Adriana smiled at his gentle touch. Bo handed her some bird seed, but the birds hopped and flew away from her awaiting paws. He noted her dejected look and took some more bird seed that led a trail to her hands. One of the birds followed the trail and then landed in her paws and ate the food awaiting it. The two smiled at each other happily. Bo followed the birds over to a tree and stood behind it, out of Adriana's line of sight. 
What was this he was feeling? He had never felt this way before. It was a totally new experience, and he kind of liked it. But it was so strange. Could he have feelings for this, well, beast? Adriana looked after him. He looked kind of confused, like he didn't know what was going on or what he was doing. He seemed so comfortable with her now, and she with him. His eyes were showing a new emotion, but she couldn't exactly say what that emotion was. When Bo turned back to her, he saw that she was covered in birds who were looking for more food. Bo laughed kindly, a sound that was pure bliss to Adriana's ears. The birds finally flew away, and she looked at Bo proudly for having them like her when a huge ball of snow collided with her face. She looked over at Bo to find him laughing at her surprised reaction. She smiled at him cheekily and prepared a huge snowball of her own. She prepared to throw it when she got hit with another snowball. The shock of it caused her to drop her own freshly made snowball on her head. Bo laughed again, and while he was distracted, Adriana was finally able to nail him with a snowball of her own. The pair started laughing and more snowballs went flying. It was the most fun Adriana had ever had in her whole life. The couple went inside after spending a good bit of time in the snow and sat by the fire to warm up. Bo chose a book from his new library and they sat together as he read it to Adriana. They made it through the entire book before it got increasingly late. Adriana, Bo said as he closed the book. Yes? You know, we never did get that dinner together. Bo grimaced as he remembered his behavior that night. Looking back on it, he probably shouldn't have been so rude. Yeah, I suppose not. <laughs> well, what's stopping us? What? Adriana, would you please have dinner with me tomorrow night? Y you mean it? I certainly do. I would love to. They smiled at each other and went their separate ways to prepare for sleep. When Adriana returned to her room, she went over to the rose. Several more petals had fallen off, and only a few remained. Just hold on. She whispered to the exquisite flower. I can do this. Bo sat on his bed. He no longer felt like a prisoner. He felt more at home than he had ever had before. And he could no longer deny that he definitely felt things for that girl. Now both of them just had to admit it. The next day, in preparation for that night, which could very well be the night that the spell broke, Adriana ordered the whole castle to be dusted and cleaned. To keep Bo busy while they did so, Adriana took him into the library and they sat at a table and read again. Bo specifically chose the book, Romeo and Juliet. This is a beautiful story I read back home. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'm sure I will. They sat at the table as Bo read her the story, and she laughed as he acted out the different characters by reading them in various voices and accents. When they finally got to the end, Adriana smiled. What a beautiful, tragic love story. But how romantic that they were willing to go to such lengths for their love. Why, Bo, I had no idea you had such a soft side. I've always loved romance stories. I've always hoped to find one of my own. Adriana smiled, thinking to herself how his wish might just be coming true. Will you read it again? Again? <laughs> Why don't you read it to me instead? He handed her the book and she uncomfortably took it. She opened it up, but all the words seemed like a foreign language to her. Um... I, I can't. You mean, you never learned how to read? Well, I learned. It was just a very long time ago. I'm afraid too long. Bo smiled at her. Well, here, I'll help you. Just start at the beginning. Adriana smiled back. Oh, okay. She took a look at the first line spoken by the chorus. Um... Two? Two. Right, I knew that. Okay, um... Two households. Both alike in... Dignity? Good! Butterflies flew in Adriana's stomach at his praises and thoughts about that night. Chapter 7 Adriana's nerves heightened as her servants tended to her and got her fixed up. 
She had to wonder if Bo felt the same way. Tonight's the big night! Shandell squealed as Adriana took a bath. I'm not so sure I can do this. What if I mess up and ruin all of our chances? You can't think that way, mistress. You must be confident above all else. Confident. Okay. Adriana stood up and shook all the water out of her fur, completely dousing Chandel. There will be romantic candlelight, some soft music, and when the time is right, you will tell him that you love him. But what if he doesn't feel the same way? Madame, I think he does. How can he love me? I mean, look at me. Well, you care for him, don't you? Of course. More than anything in the world. Then you have to let him know. How else will you ever know about his feelings? One of her servants finished cutting up her fur and admired her work. There you go. You look very... Um... Very... Uh, Stupid. Adriana finished as she saw the curls and bows in her fur. I wasn't going to say that. Let's make it a bit less flamboyant. Meanwhile, Mr. Potts and the wardrobe were helping Bo get ready. The wardrobe had found an elegant yellow suit for him to wear, with a matching translucent cape. I'm a bit nervous. I'm sure the mistress is too. She hasn't had an elegant occasion like this in quite a long time. Bo tied his hair back with a yellow ribbon to match the suit. What if I do something wrong? It's dinner. What can go wrong? I don't know. I just don't want to appear stupid in front of her. I have a feeling she won't mind. She herself is still unaware of how a woman is supposed to be treated at events like this. This is your time to show her. Bo finished putting on his suit and the wardrobe and Mr. Potts escorted him to the stairs, while Chandel did the same for Adriana. Bo came down one end of the stairs and met Adriana in the middle as she came down the other side. She was wearing a solid blue dress that hugged her entire frame and was made suited to fit her body type. He had to admit that for a beast, she looked really pretty. Adriana felt the butterflies beat faster as she approached Bo. She had never seen him look so handsome. He was dressed in her favorite suit, and she had a feeling the wardrobe had a hand in picking it out for him to wear. His yellow cape glistened as it trailed behind him. When they met in the middle, Bo bowed to her. In response, Adriana gave him a small curtsy. Then he held out his arm for her, and she gingerly took it as they began to descend the rest of the stairs. When they got to the table, Bo pulled the chair out for Adriana, and she sat down with a smile. Bo took his seat at the other end, and Mr. Potts served them with china by his side. They began eating, and Adriana had a less difficult time with her silverware. After they were full, Bo got up from his seat and went over to Adriana. Mademoiselle? He said as he extended his hand. May I have this dance? Adriana smiled and took his hand as he helped her up from her seat and led her to the ballroom. Bo had a feeling she didn't know much about ballroom dancing, so he guided her through it. He put her hand on his shoulder and held her other hand out. Slowly, they danced across the whole floor to the beautiful music. Adriana looked over to find Chandel and Cora smiling at her. Bo led her in the dance and smiled at her, which made Adriana want to dissolve into a little puddle. The lights got dimmer, and the song ended. Bo decided to take Adriana out onto the balcony, where they could get a full view of the starry night sky. Bo? Adriana said as they sat on the bench together. Are... Are you happy here? With all of us? With me? Yes, I am. It's just that... What? Is something wrong? Well, I am happy here, but... But I really do miss my mother. She was the only family I had left. I guess I just want to see her again. Adriana didn't blame him. She missed her family too. But ever since the curse, the only family she had were her servants. Well, there is a way for you to see her. What? Adriana took him back to the West Wing, no longer forbidden now that it was cleaned up and he knew the secret of the rose. She picked up her mirror. This mirror can show you anything you desire. Just ask it. Bo took it. I'd... I'd like to see my mother. The mirror glowed and revealed poor Marguerite lost in the storm, 
turning bluer by the second from the cold. Mother? What is she doing? She looks sick, and she's all alone out there. Adriana looked at the rose and tried to conceal the tears in her eyes. She knew what she had to do. Then, go find her. What? Go find her. You're not a prisoner anymore. In fact, you haven't been for a while now. You mean you're setting me free? Yes. She turned away from him. Now go. Before your mother's killed by the storm. Thank you, Adriana. He gave the mirror to her, but she pushed it towards him. Keep it. So you won't forget me. Bo touched her cheek. I could never forget you. Thank you for understanding. Of course. Now go. Bo took off as fast as he could, eager to get to his mother before she got hurt. Adriana leaned onto the table as tears escaped from her eyes. That was perfect, Your Grace. Cora exclaimed as she came into the room. I knew it would be. Everything's going to be just fine. No. I let him go, Cora. Cora froze. You let him go? But, but why? Because I had to. But why? Because I love him. She smiled sadly through her tears. And I had to let him go to show him that. Bo threw off his suit and changed back into his shirt and vest. Then he mounted on Phoenix, and when he got to the gate, he heard a fierce, tremendous roar behind him. He looked back up to the west wing of the balcony to find Adriana. I'm sorry. Then he took off on Phoenix through the woods. Chapter 8 Mother! Bo called into the woods. Mother, please answer me! He gasped as he found her face down on the ground, unconscious. He dismounted from Phoenix and got her onto the horse, and they walked home. He got his mother inside the house carefully and laid her onto the bed. He wasn't aware of the small girl, who was now a light blue, watching them. She ran off to go tell Gabriella the news. Bo watched as his mother slowly came to. Bo? It's all right, mother. You're safe now. We're home. She sat up and hugged her son tightly. I thought I had lost you forever. You'll never lose me. I'll always find a way back to you. But, but how do you escape from that monster? She's not a monster, mother. She has a name. It's Adriana. Adriana? Yes. And I didn't have to escape because she let me go and find you. That beast let you go? She's not the same beast you saw before. She's much different. It took a lot to bring down her walls, but when she did, there was a soul just longing for someone to be with her. There was a small clatter behind them, and China fell out of Bo's bag. Hi! China! Does your father know you're here? Um, no. What are you doing here? I wanted to know why you left. Do you still like us? Did we do something to upset you? Bo held China in his hand. No, sweetheart, it was nothing like that. I'm afraid you're a bit too young to understand it all. That's what Papa said, too. <laughs> well, he knows what he's talking about. It's not that I don't like you all, it's just that... Bo was cut off by a knock at the door. He went to go answer it, and found Madame Ruse standing there. Madame Ruse, what are you doing here? Hello, Bo. I've come for your mother. My... my mother? Don't worry, dear. She'll be taken care of properly. She revealed that she had brought her cart, and it was clear to Bo that she intended to put his perfectly sane mother into the asylum. My mother's not crazy! Of course she is! She came into the tavern raving about some creature and talking objects. Bo? His mother said quietly as she came to the door. Marguerite, why don't you tell us more about the beast? Um, it was huge. Maybe ten feet tall. The crowd burst out into laughter. You see? Her mind is completely lost. Just get her out of here where everyone else will be safe from her. 
Two of Madame Ruse's guards grabbed Marguerite's arms and began to haul her away to the cart. You can't do this! I can do whatever I see fit to keep the town safe from people like her. Bo grunted in frustration as his fists balled together. I'm sorry, Bo. Gabriella said with a false concern as she revealed herself from the shadows. It's a shame about your mother. Gabriella, you know she's not crazy. You know, I might be able to clear this all up. She smiled as she put her hands to his chest. Under one condition. What is it? You marry me. What? Bo exclaimed as he took a step back. Just say the word and all of this will go away. Gabriella, did, did you plan this? I'm a girl who knows what she wants. And what I want is you. No. Excuse me? Gabriella said as the smile disappeared from her face. I'm not going to marry you, Gabriella. Her jaw clenched. Have it your way. She looked at Madame Ruse. Take her away. No! Bo! Marguerite cried as they prepared to throw her in the cart. Bo ran back inside the house, grabbed the mirror Adriana had given him, and ran back out. My mother isn't crazy and I can prove it! He looked at the mirror. Show me the beast! The mirror flashed and he showed the picture of Adriana to the crowd. She was still depressed about losing Bo and let out a huge roar. Is it dangerous? No, she wouldn't hurt a soul. I know, I know that she looks scary and vicious, but she's really not like that at all. She's sweet, funny, kind. She's... she's my... Bo searched for the right word to add. Friend. Gabriella stood in front of him. If I didn't know any better, I would say you had feelings for that. She scowled at the mirror where Adriana still showed. Monster. She's no monster, Gabriella. You are. The crowd gasped at Bo's words. No one had ever dared to speak rudely to Gabriella before. She was dangerously powerful and could do things that no one else could do. Gabriella grabbed the mirror from Bo as anger penetrated her face. Now she understood. Bo had feelings for the creature, and as long as that thing was alive, Bo would never be hers. He's just as crazy as his mother. That thing will come after the children here, and it'll take them while we sleep. No, she would never do anything like that. We're not safe until its head is cut off and hanging in the tavern for all to see. Let's kill this thing and ensure the safety of our innocent children. The crowd screamed in agreement. Bring me my arrows. Most of the crowd didn't want to follow a woman and didn't believe she could do the job, but all Gabriella had to do was give her signature smile that made all the men fall for her in seconds, and some of them retrieved her arrows and quiver and her majestic black horse. Gabriella filled the crowd's head with terrifying images of the beast that sat in the castle. Gabriella! Bo screamed as he grabbed her arms. You can't do this! I can do whatever I want, Bo. She turned to the men. Lock them both up. We can't have him going ahead of us and warning that creature. The men shoved Bo and his mother into their basement and locked the door. Gabriella, Are you sure we should try doing this? Uh, you know, I mean, trying to get Bo as your husband is one thing, but this is murder! If you're not coming with us, we'll throw you in with Bo and his mother. So are you coming or not? Leia reluctantly nodded her head and followed. Gabriella slid her arrows over her shoulder and mounted her horse, leading the way as the mob grabbed torches and pitchforks and began the trek to the castle. Bo could hear the sounds of the mob getting quieter and quieter. He began scouring the nearly empty basement for something he could use to unlock the door. I have to get to the castle and warn Adriana. They're going to kill her. I didn't mean for this to happen. I was just trying to prove that you were telling the truth. You really like her. Don't you? Bo hesitated before answering. Yes, I do. It's all right, sweetheart. We'll think of something and get out of here. Bo? They heard from outside. Where are you? China? What's going on? There are a lot of people going to the castle to hurt Adriana. 
You have to find a way to get us out of here so we can get to the castle before them. China desperately looked around her for something she could use to open up the door. She quickly hopped off and went to find Phoenix. Phoenix! She called as she went to the little stable and found the horse. Bo's in trouble. She hopped onto her back and Phoenix went to the door. Phoenix? Phoenix, kick the door open! China hopped off the horse and Phoenix used her hooves to break in the door. Good girl! Bo said as he and Marguerite climbed out. Thanks, China. You're the best. Bo and Marguerite mounted Phoenix and rode as fast as they could to the castle. Bo just hoped that he wasn't too late. Chapter 9 I knew we shouldn't have gotten our hopes up. Perhaps it would have been better if he'd never come at all. I've never seen the mistress so upset and heartbroken. Wait, do you hear that? Is it the boy? They all ran to the window and saw a huge throng of people coming to the castle. Oh no! Invaders! Look! They have the mistress's mirror. Alert the mistress and assemble everyone downstairs. We're going to fight them off. Shandell and Cora went off to protect the castle, while Mr. Potts went to go warn Adriana. Mistress! He called as he walked into the West Wing. Leave me alone. Your Grace, the castle is under attack. We must do something. They'll kill you. It doesn't matter anymore. Without Bo, Adriana found she had lost the will to do anything and everything. He had filled her with something she hadn't felt in a long time. When he left, he took all of that with him. Mr. Potts sadly left, knowing he wouldn't be able to change her mind. He hadn't seen his daughter in a while either, which made him nervous, but he couldn't think about that now. If they didn't stop these people, it would be disastrous for everyone. The mob continued to knock down the door with a huge log. All of the objects in the castle became inanimate and hid in plain sight. Once Leia picked up Shandell, the candlestick screamed, No! All of the objects came to life and started abusing the invaders in more ways than one. The drawers hit them in the head. Potts and Pan banged on them. Mr. Potts got his children to pour extremely hot tea on them. Gabriella looked around at the commotion and rolled her eyes. These were the men sent to protect the village. Such wimps. She would just have to take things in her own hands. She escaped up the stairs from the chaos and searched in all the rooms for the beast who had stolen Bo's affections from her. Meanwhile, one of the attackers held up a torch to Chandel, causing her to begin to melt. Hey, you bum! She took a pair of scissors and stabbed him right in the butt. Why, Cora, I never knew you were so brave. Well, I have my moments. The attackers one by one ran out of the castle as fast as they could, eager to get away from the abuse. And stay out! Chandel laughed and hugged her friend happily, and Cora surprisingly did the same. Gabriella finally found the room the beast was in. She was hunched over... A rose, it looked like. She quietly put an arrow in her quiver and released, sending it right into her shoulder. She roared fiercely at the sudden unexpected pain and reached up to pull the arrow out. She turned and saw with horror that Gabriella was standing in the doorway with a sadistic smile on her face. Gabriella ran up to her and pushed her through the window out into the falling rain. After grabbing a sword in the room and following her out, her hair matted down on her face, but that wasn't the issue she was concerned about. She laughed at the beast's obvious pain. She then pushed her off the balcony and onto the rooftops. Gabriella laughed again. This was way too easy. What's the matter? Too sweet and kind to defend yourself from me? Adriana couldn't fight back. The pain in her heart was just too great at losing the one person she loved. She knew that this girl was going to kill her and closed her eyes sadly as she waited for the pain. No! She heard a familiar voice cry out. Bo? She said as she looked down, there was Bo atop his horse, his mother, and China by his side. Gabriella, don't do this! Adriana felt hope rise up in her. He had actually come back. For her! Gabriella took the sword and approached Adriana with the full intent of chopping off her head. But Adriana whirled around and caught her arm before she could strike. She knocked the sword out of her grasp and pushed her back. Gabriella took a step back after releasing herself, alarmed at the beast's newfound will to fight. Come on, Phoenix! Phoenix galloped to the door and broke through the remains of it. 
Good girl. Bo got off her and ran up the stairs to the west wing. He felt like it was impossible for him to make it before Adriana got hurt. Adriana and Gabriella went at it at the rooftops. Adriana managed to grab her quiver and send it tumbling far below. Gabriella's fury rose, and she took an arrow and stabbed it into Adriana's arm to subdue her. But that only angered Adriana more, and she grabbed her bag of arrows and sent it down to follow the quiver. Gabriella managed to grab the sword again, but when she looked back, Adriana had concealed herself in the shadows. Were you in love with him? She called out, trying to lure her out of hiding with her words. Why would he choose someone like you? You're a monster! He would much rather have me. A perfectly normal, pretty girl. Gabriella! Gabriella turned to find Leia facing her. You've gone too far! Stay back, Leah! This is my fight! No one can have Bo but me! No! I won't let you do this! Leia tried to get the sword out of her grasp, but Gabriella was more experienced than her. She kicked Leia back, knocking her unconscious. Adriana had had enough of this. She quietly went behind Gabriella, but Gabriella heard her and whipped around, her sword flying in attempts to strike Adriana. Adriana couldn't escape the sword's path and kept getting backed up. It's over! With you out of the picture, Bo will be mine! This was the last straw for Adriana. She pushed Gabriella against the roof, causing her to lose her sword again. She then grabbed her wrist and held her over the ground far, far below. No, please! Don't let me fall! I'm, I'm sorry! I'll do anything! Please, just please don't let me die! Adriana would never allow herself to be the reason someone died. Slowly, she brought the girl back onto the roof. Get out of my castle! Bo will never be yours! Gabriella gasped for breath, realizing how close to death she had come, but she knew she wasn't finished with this beast just yet. Adriana! Adriana looked up to find Bo on the balcony. The wind and the rain had caused his hair to come loose from his ribbon, and it was flailing all around his face. Bo! She slowly climbed up the roof to him and took his awaiting hand. You're here. Their eyes met lovingly as she took in the fact that he had actually come back for her. Maybe he did love her. She still had a chance. Suddenly, an overwhelming pain caused her to let out a tremendous roar in agony. <laughs> Bo saw with horror that Gabriella had climbed up the roof and had stuck her sword deep in Adriana's side. Blood began to pour out of the wound. Adriana began to fall backwards, but Bo clutched onto her. Gabriella lost her grip on the balcony. She completely lost her footing and fell down to the ground below with an ear-shattering scream. <coughs> Bo looked after her in sadness. He wouldn't wish that fate on anyone, even someone like Gabriella. Bo gently laid Adriana down on the ground of the balcony. She weakly opened her eyes as Chandel, Cora, Mr. Potts ran out to see their beloved mistress gravely injured. You... You came back. Of course I came back. Did you think that I wouldn't? Well, there's not exactly a lot to come back to. No, there's everything to come back to. She smiled weakly at him. You really think so? I've spent years hoping that I could have a romance story like the ones I've read, but I didn't even see it unfolding right in front of me. Bo... Ever since you read that story, you've been my Romeo. Bo smiled as tears began to form in his eyes. And you are my Juliet. I'm just glad I got to see you one more time. No, Adriana, you're going to be fine, okay? Just stay with me. Adriana gasped as another wave of pain coursed through her. Bo? I... I... Yes? With one last exhale, Adriana went limp. No. Adriana! Adriana! A tear crawled down his cheek. Please! He took her still form and held her as more tears began to flow from his eyes. I love you. He began to sob like he had never sobbed before and never would again. The three objects watched as the very last petal on the rose drifted down. 
and nothing happened. This was it. They were now stuck like this forever, and they had lost the one person that they truly cared about more than anything. Bo continued to cry his heart out as he sobbed over her lifeless form. Suddenly, small little beams of light began to fall all around him. He didn't notice them until he felt Adriana being lifted from his arms. He stared at her as she was lifted higher and higher and enveloped in a ball of light. Her cloak wrapped around her body when she began to change right before his eyes. Bo watched in awe and wonder as her paw glowed and turned into a human hand. Her leg glowed and turned into a human foot, and her face glowed so bright that Bo had to shield his eyes as all of her fur was whisked away and left a human face behind. She slowly descended back onto the balcony, still wrapped in her cloak. Bo went to touch the girl until she began to move. She slowly stood up and looked at her hands and felt her hair. Then she turned around with a huge smile on her face and looked at the boy. Bo! She exclaimed as she took his hand in hers. It's me! Bo moved her hair from her face as he rubbed her cheek with his thumb and looked straight into her eyes. They were unmistakable. It is you! They smiled at each other and drew closer and closer until their lips met in the kiss they had each been waiting for for so long. The wind whipped at their loose hair as they held each other close, neither willing to let go. They released as the objects came out onto the balcony and began to change. Shandell! Adriana said as she changed back into herself. Cora! Cora smiled at her as she changed back. Mr. Potts! He smiled at her as well. She joined them all in a tight group hug. We're all back! Bo! Bo turned to find Leia running onto the balcony. Adriana smiled at her. Thank you for helping me down there. I'm so sorry to both of you about everything I've done to help Gabriella. I was so blind by my desire for her approval that I couldn't see what she was becoming. It's all right. Papa! Papa! China hopped into the room and transformed into the cute little eight-year-old girl she was. Mr. Potts held his arms out, and China ran into them as they tightly embraced. I love you, Papa. She squealed as she threw her arms around his neck. I love you too, darling. Bo picked up Adriana and spun her around the whole balcony as she laughed happily, her vibrant red hair flying around her. She couldn't have been happier. With all the guests in the kingdom, the castle was filled with people for the first time in years. Bo was dressed in the yellow suit and cape from before, and Adriana wore a different blue dress that fit around her now very tiny frame. They looked into each other's eyes and kissed once more. Their lips danced over each other, a feeling neither of them had known before, and now never wanted to let go of. Bo once again led her in a ballroom dance, not unlike the one they shared before. His eyes met his mother's at one point, and he could see tears forming in them. He smiled broadly back at her, knowing that what she had said before was right. He just needed to wait until he found the one special girl who was meant for him. Adriana leaned her head on Bo's shoulder as they continued to dance. I love you, Adriana. I love you too, Bo. And they both lived happily ever after. End of story.